Okay, okay, so we're going to talk about efficiency. Okay, this is an economy of language. And this takes pr practice, it takes work, it takes thought, it takes introspection. It takes using the thesaurus. Thesaurus.com is your friend. It is one of the numerous Bibles of how to say things efficiently because you want to be able to actually move into the language that you really love. And in order to move into the language you really love, you have to fall in love with what you're talking about. Come up with the list of ideas, the list of words, the list of the list of expressions that you love to say. You may have heard me refer to the energy with which you talk as, as, uh, as the following. Why not present yourself with vim, vigor, verve, moxie? Um, I sometimes use the word, you know, panache, style, aplomb. These are sexy, cool words that I like. And, you know, um, Vim, Vigor, Verve, and Moxie, right? I love those words. I've always liked those words, but I've coupled them and I've found that they, they work. Vim, Vigor, Verve, Moxie. I've had people comment back to me using some of those words because they love that I use them and it triggers something that allows them to sprinkle their response to me with the same words I use. And that's one of the beautiful things about finding the ways you like to say stuff. Now, the other thing about Vim, Vigor, Verve, and Moxie is that I don't have to think about it. And another way, another thing about that is that when I say those words because I like them, you can see my enjoyment of saying them. I get to say them. And it makes me happy. And this is part of the economy of expression. Okay, we're in this business world, and you may very well know Tony Robbins. Maybe you've heard him say his stuff. Maybe you've heard Dean Graziosi say his stuff. Maybe you've heard, I don't know who it is. Whatever cool TED talk. That shit's really important. Because those people practice that stuff. Not a TEDx. I'm not talking about a TEDx. TEDx, just so you know the difference, TEDx, any neighborhood can hold a TEDx and anybody can actually get a gig on a TEDx. Have I done a TEDx? No. Do I care? No. I've done the Letterman show. You know, I mean, not that I'm dropping names. I've performed for millions and I don't care about a TEDx. I would be delighted if and when ultimately I'm on a TED Talk. Okay, a TED Talk is important. Much more important than a TEDx, although, you know, if you've never done a talk that's big, then a TEDx will be important to you, and I think that's wonderful. But anybody who's done a TED they've they know the significance and they've rehearsed and worked on the thing or they are being called in because their stuff is already fantastic and because it's fantastic they've been invited and they've invited because it's fantastic because they've actually practiced honed rehearsed refined repeated the thing over and over and over again that has given rise to their being invited. Just like, you know, whatever TV show I've done, I was invited because my work has been rehearsed and presented and repeated and investigated and refined until the thing is locked in. It's solid. And that's when you have the opportunity to bring something that's so crystal clear and clean that you get invited to the big stuff. But before getting invited to the big stuff, you have to practice your shizzle. So what you do 
is you go into the words that you want to use and you look at the expressions. I may have worked with you on your mission statement. Your mission statement is important. It's valuable. It helps you to move things forward. And when you use a good mission statement, you have something that you appreciate, you like, and you have refined down. Then you take the concepts behind that and you turn it into an elevator pitch. And you rehearse and examine the elevator pitch and the phrases and the expressions and the word choices like vim, vigor, verb, and moxie, like shaves weeks, months, and years off your learning curve. These other expressions that I use that you may well know about that I use. That's the stuff that you find that trips off your tongue and you economize and you make it really quick, concise, and clear. Do I need to impress upon you why that's so important? Okay, I'll do it. You want to have something that you don't have to think about, that you care about dearly, that you don't get tired of saying, that says the stuff as quickly as you can so that when someone is asking for something, you know, what do you do? I forge video mastery and camera confidence for coaches and entrepreneurs. I've been doing this since 1987 to thousands of individuals, business people, artists, and students alike. And I myself have performed to, you know, a TV worldwide audience of well over 2 billion people with the method that I've invented myself and I teach you and everybody else how to. And people say, whoa, I think that was 20 seconds. Maybe it was a little longer. It was quick. It was improvised. You know, I didn't memorize anything. I don't have to. I can reinvent that thing and reorganize that thing every time I need to. What do you want to hear? That's why I kind of chuckle when people put that question forth. You know, what could you talk about at a drop of a hat for 20 minutes to an audience? Uh, you know, and I think... Are you kidding? 20 minutes? A subject? I can talk about 15 different subjects for an hour and not have any fluff in them. Because I've worked at this for a long time. Now, I don't expect you to have that kind of ability yet, but I want you to shoot for that. I want you to look at that and say, yeah, I can do this. This is cool. That sounds appealing to me. Let's get started. When you get a solid 30 minutes of badassery on a topic of your choice and you lock that shit in, go on to the next one. Then you have two. Then you have three. Then you have four, five, six, seven. When you can do 20 solid minutes, make it 30, 40 solid minutes. Doesn't have to be big, long things. Doesn't have to be an hour. Don't say, don't, don't take up a whole hour with something that actually only deserves eight badass minutes. Some of the TED Talks are only eight minutes. They say, your time slot is eight minutes. Make it, make it eight. On the Letterman Show, when we did our Velcro ball piece that you may be familiar with, we'd been doing that for years. Letterman, you know, the Letterman people saw us on Broadway and invited us to Letterman. Okay, we've been doing that piece as the, after our bows, after our standing ovation, we bow, we run off stage, we come back on and we do one of our, one of our big pieces that bring the house down. That particular piece was about five minutes, four minutes, 45 seconds when we did it fast. And Letterman told us, make it four minutes. And I, I said back to him, I said, four, that piece is a real solid 445. And they said, the response of the talent coordinator there was, I don't have to tell you how important this job can be for your career. You know that. But what I can tell you is if you make it four minutes, I promise the whole thing will be on the show. If you give us 430, 
the last 30 seconds of that piece might be cut off and whatever cool stuff you have at the end of that piece might actually be running not only behind the credits, but when the credits are over, show goes black. Your call. <laughs> the message was very clear. So I tell you this now. When, when the TED company contacts you and says, we like what you're talking about, you have eight minutes. How are you going to restructure and refine and pare back in order to deliver that 15 minute smoking thing in eight minutes? By taking every seven word phrase and turning it into four. By taking any repeat phrases or sentences that describe the same thing and cutting one of them out. And for what it's worth, I reiterate, I repeat the concept of the person, me being a choreographer, I've said this one before, famous choreographer Catherine Dunham was approached by a student who said to her, how do you make a great piece of choreography? And the star choreographer the legend in modern dance looked at that student and said the following in order to make a good piece of choreography make anything put in everything that you love and you have yourself a piece then remove from that piece everything that is unnecessary and then cut it in half and you'll have a good piece. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. What I am saying is that that type of practice is the way. So you have an elevator pitch that comes from your mission statement, that comes from your core truth. And you want to make sure that you bring that shit like a badass. Economy of language, clarity of idea, efficiency of delivery. Work at that. And don't settle for getting it pretty good. Keep going back to it. Keep investigating. You'll get there. So this is 13 and a half minutes. These are not the time for me to be super efficient. These are the opportunities for me to provide you with every possible analogy I can to hit the message home. I want you to have at least one of these analogies that make you feel like you are inside this idea. If I didn't do my job, reach out to me and say, are there more ways because I didn't get it? I hope that this does it. You know where to find me. I'm on your side. That's delivery. When you do that stuff, when you lock that shit in, you will be irrefutable. People will, people will see your authority because your words and phrases and descriptors will drip of professionalism. Okay, I'm out. Speak soon. Go get them.